Cape May is an architect's dream and a vacationer's paradise. The first thing you should do when you get here, go down to the beach, put your feet in the water, feel that soft sand, and just enjoy the peace and quiet of being in Cape May. To take a walk down the streets of Cape May is like walking into a Charles Dickens novel. It's a really romantic, historic experience. In 1878, there was a great fire. When they rebuilt, it was during the Victorian era, so that's why you see a lot of that Victorian-style homes throughout the city. Places like the Physic Estate or the Southern Mansion provide guided tours for anyone who's interested in seeing what the inside of these beautiful homes look like. If you're only here for a day or two, I definitely recommend getting on a boat. Get out in that back bay, get out in the ocean, and see the Cape May area from a different perspective. The fishing industry in Cape May has sustained this area for a very long period of time, and still does. What we catch in those back bays and in the ocean, you can find right in those local restaurants, fresh and served daily. The Washington Street Mall is the heart of Cape May. What I like to do is get a coffee, walk down that brick walkway of the mall, window shop, just take a deep breath, take it all in, and really just enjoy that downtown area. Because Cape May is a peninsula, you have various opportunities to get out and see the wildlife. During your stay in Cape May, you can also pop up to Stone Harbor. Stone Harbor Point gives you an opportunity to see Stone Harbor the way that it used to be from a beach perspective. It's a conservation area that helps preserve the lands for the animals. You can go right up to the Wetlands Institute and have an opportunity to feel some of these animals, to learn more about them. They have a great educational program there at the Wetlands. If you're into architecture, if you're into great food, if you're in for fun and a good time, Come see us in Cape May. Jersey City is definitely urban with a small town feel. We have some of the best views of the New York City skyline, so the best way to experience them is to take a stroll along the waterfront. There's always something happening downtown. Coming out of the Grove Street Path Station, you walk out into this pedestrian plaza and you're going to hear live music, a farmer's market going on. If you're hungry, we have amazing food. One of my favorites downtown is Raza. You're going to get incredible pizza, but get there early because a line forms when they open. In the heart of Journal Square, you're going to find a little pocket we call Little India. You're going to find a ton of Indian grocery stores, Indian places to eat. You can just get a feel like you're in India when you're there. One of the highlights of Jersey City has got to be the Liberty Science Center. It's an interactive science museum. It's great for kids and adults. It's a ton of fun to spend half a day there with the whole family. Corgi Spirits is Jersey City's only distillery and the first one to open since Prohibition. It kind of has this library feel inside, so you could taste their gin, their vodka, their whiskey, and they make some really fantastic cocktails as well. Our neighbor to the north is Hoboken, where Frank Sinatra is from. Definitely going to have a more of a cute, quaint feel. We're going to walk down Washington and just see a ton of bars, restaurants, cafes. One of the places people really like to stop in is Carlos Bakery, which is featured on Cake Boss. Jersey City has one of the best mural programs in the country. We have local and international artists who are showcasing their gorgeous artwork. When you're seeing this art, you're getting a sense of the community, and that is something that makes Jersey City really special. We really embrace diversity here. I like making other people feel welcome, and I hope that people get the same experience when they come and visit Jersey City.